Me, 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 me. Happy birthday vlog Thursday. Hey, it's Tracy's birthday, my wife's birthday. Hi, yeah. honey. So he's got to be nice to his wife. Yeah. I she have gets to. one, well, two days a year. <laughs> <laughs> her birthday and our anniversary, and then she's That's on her it. own. Then, yeah, and on her own. After that, I'm a total jerk. Yep, Marvin can go back to doing Marvin things. <laughs> <laughs> I just got to get through the next few hours. Next few hours. So and sometimes we, we, our wives may watch this. We're not sure, but they may. Uh, yeah, she, does she, she? she usually does. <laughs> it may not be like today, so I might get like a week out of it. But, you know, she'll watch it and I'll know because I'll hear her yell from the office. Yeah, something like that. <laughs> she'll say, you're a jerk all the time. That was my impression of my wife. So, <laughs> so <much trouble. laughs> you jerk all the time. <laughs> so much trouble. That's all right, though. That's all right. Uh, uh, hi, everyone. Hi, everyone. <laughs> Vlog Thursday. And uh, so lots of projects, mm. like always. I always say that, but, but you know. It, well, it's true. We got a lot going true. on, which is awesome. awesome. We, did a, we did that quick Vlog Tuesday because I was just like, it, I just want to share sometimes like what's going on. I'm trying to figure out better ways to do it because people I think are curious and and we, Tom gets bored. Well, no, <laughs> no. So well, let's let's roll back to some topic we were talking about. And I was reading this, and it was interesting to me because it completely makes sense. And Marvin's going to go, "Yep, that makes sense." Uh, they were talking about how people with ADD or whatever is we are. And I say we, I'm not that I have any diagnosis. I, I just love everything going on around me. I like a little bit of chaos and I'm very random. I'm not a doctor, but Tom, you have ADHD. <laughs> <laughs> but this is one of the reasons why people diagnosed with that are often prescribed stimulants is because it's a lack of activity in the brain. So you're trying to make all the activity go around. Mm. And I'm like, you know, that makes a lot of sense because I'm always trying to have everything going on. And like, I have all these things going around me. And I'm like, wait a minute, I didn't post a video in a few days because I got I was doing other things. So then I'm like, let's just post a video real quick. And then I found time yesterday because I finished all my projects and I posted two more videos. Yeah, I posted two. I don't know, I posted more videos. And so I didn't think I'd have time to do it before today, but I got it done. Uh, no, I posted one on invoicing. I did a video on invoicing, that's oh. what I did. Yes. You know, probably while I was supposed to do invoicing, Marvin's probably going, Tom was probably supposed to be doing invoicing. Yeah. But instead, he made a video on invoicing. Yeah. Pretty sure I got a Slack message that said, such and such is invoiceable. So was this one. That was this morning. I did the invoicing video yesterday. Okay. All right. I was supposed to do the invoicing yesterday. I didn't. Because that's the thing. That guess I know what I'm doing today. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this guy's going to do some invoicing. Yay. That's an important aspect in business. It totally is. And I'll watch the video to make sure I'm doing it correctly. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it's because of my simplicity and in invoicing, and I wanted to talk about that because we've we've discussed before, and um, we we want to bid against another IT company, and one of the, the complaints was we don't know what they're trying to charge us for, and I looked at it and I'm like, really, they they just decided to line item every single little thing, including every single individual wall plate they were charging them for. Oh. Not that we are not charging you for wall plates, we're just not creating a two page bid to put in 15 wires. And I one of the invoices I demoed was when we installed 122 drops in. This company had individually, and this was not a big project, but they had so much on the bill, they created like a confusion for the client going, I don't I don't really understand. Like you're, you have this short paragraph that you're gonna do this, and they have this long thing. Now, and that's where I divide up scope of work versus invoice, scope of work all the details that matter to IT people. Invoice, signed off by someone in management mm -hmm. that just wants to know that this thing was done and it's okay to pay the bill. Mm -hmm. And good, I'm clear. It says you installed 122 new drops in our office. Right. I don't need to know exactly how many of them had mud rings, how many of them had uh, you know, a two connector, three connector, four wall plate, one wall plate, two gang, three gang, and how many blanks were used. Yes, they counted, they would use a four, whole plate and then counted the extra little individual blanks they would put in because there's only three drops necessary. <laughs> yeah, so you created this confusion and it wasn't <laughs> one of the things is we were very um, similar in price, me and the other IT company, but they just didn't get the best impression from dealing with them. They seemed overly complicated and we try to keep things very, very simple. You're paying us for a service and we make sure you just understand the value of the service and then we mm -hmm. put that in simple means. What we do is very complicated in IT. IT is a very complicated space. There are many moving parts to it, you know, but when I installed, we just installed uh, three VPNs for a client 
uh, for all the different locations. Basically, they have a head end, and then they have satellite locations, and then they have what we refer to as the road warriors, which are gonna be their sales guys on the road. Um, it really simply says installed VPN firewall with PF Sense. It's a very basic invoice for a lot of money. I could put the entire, oh yeah, we set up all these uh, TLS authentication keys and did this and did this. They don't- But who cares? They don't really care. No. Yeah. You care. No, no one Maybe cares. their tech guy cares. Yes. But- and I, I really like the business owner because he, <laughs> he's like, here's uh, one of the guys was asking me some tech questions that works there because he's on the side. He likes technology mm -hmm. stuff. And the owner had walked in behind me. He goes, oh, man, VPNs. Love those good VPNs with all that security <laughs> thingies and stuff with them. <laughs> just he had no idea what a VPN was. <laughs> no, he's not. He doesn't like. He, he <laughs> likes technology as it serves him his purpose. He does not care what brand we install. He does not. He goes, Tom, is it secure? All right. I approve the project here. You go, go ahead and install it. That's he goes. I trust you'll secure it. Yep. Okay. Cool. Implement it for me. There you and go. That's uh, we've actually get along great with him as a client. He's been using our services for eleven years, I think. Eleven or twelve. We I met him Sorry, early on yeah. in business. So I, I've known that company for a while. And uh, smart business guy. He's actually bought several companies. So now it's kind of funny. Through one guy, we now service. Four companies, yeah. but it's all his companies, <laughs> so they're not really four different companies. <laughs> yeah, yeah. They all have different names. They're in different categories. Uh, he's just a really good, smart business mm -hmm. guy. Uh, unlike diversify, me. man. You know, I'm more of a tech guy who <laughs> learned some business. <laughs> <laughs> but it's working. It's working quite well. We are debating about Slack. Now, I don't mind mm -hmm. paying for products. And I, if we've been using it. If they're worth it. And we've been using a free version of Slack, but we want some more features and... I, I just think it gets pricey. Like they may want me to go for these features to spend quite a bit more. And I'm kind of like, oh, I love open source software. So what are some open source alternatives? Um, matter, matter some, matter dumb, matter something. I don't know. I'll, I'll, I'll probably put the link right here because uh, <laughs> whatever it is, I think it's matter dumb. There's an open source copy of Slack that we're going to look at. We, and even their hosted uh, prices is really reasonable. I just think for the number of team members and what we use Slack for, which is primarily memes, <laughs> just gonna say, food, yep. food discussion yep. and how we handle clients. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, you get nothing... a post of, you know, Hey, did you do this thing at this place? Yes. Hey, look at this meme. Look at that meme. Hey Tom, when you come back, grab this from <laughs> grab lunch here. Yeah. <laughs> hey, yeah. look what uh, somebody said. <laughs> uh, Slack for us is what in, because we treat people, you know, I, I would, how would you word that? I would say we, we treat people like People not like treat yeah. people like humans, not like tickets. Yeah, you're not a, you're not a ticket number. You're, you're not a ticket number. And so people ask, "What's your ticketing system?" I'm like, "We don't assign exact ticket numbers for it. We put things in a project." Our management ticketing queue. system is try not to speed and get one. Yes, that's our ticketing system. <laughs> that's your ticketing system. <laughs> but it doesn't work. We still get them. Yeah, I mean, there's code IDs when there's projects. So there's there yeah. are things that have to be done for larger scale projects uh, and how they're coordinated. Matter of fact, when there was a large scale project, that will often get its own Slack channel to discuss that particular project and the uh, details of it. But just assigning every time someone has a problem, we don't assign it a ticket number in a traditional way. Uh, if it's a larger, can't be fixed immediately thing, it may go on our project management list, which is really a Google Sheets thing, which you've been uh, slowly enhancing. And then from the Google Sheets stuff, most of the problems though are like, oh no, I broke Outlook. We had someone who broke Outlook again uh, with 30,000 spam emails. It was a misconfigured. We, we've been trying to talk them into getting off of the hosting. It's really craptastic that they have because wow. it doesn't have proper filtering and things like that, uh, which is what led to 30,000 of the same emails just bombarding and being allowed to get into their inbox and Outlook crashed because it couldn't handle all those emails at once and trying to filter them. So we had to go in the back end and filter it. But wow. that was an actually easier fix. It wasn't really a project. It was just log into the back end of the system, match this and delete. So those things come in, they come to our support uh, email and then we throw them in Slack and say, hey, uh, so-and-so at such and such company needs this done and whoever's available will just jump on it and go, I got it and take care of it. So we know it's being taken care of. Uh, whoever said that is gonna be the one champion the project. A, you know, mini project ticket, if you will. But the customers like it because we reply to them right away. Uh, the person who's going to be doing it will reply to the email. So when you send support, it gets to all of us. That someone will tackle it. We mentioned in Slack who's going to tackle the project. And that's actually where our Slack integration is getting a little bit confusing as we're getting. Uh, is I just got a Slack message right now. Ah, cool. <laughs> 
But the uh, what, what the goal is to have it come right into a support box on Slack, and it, Slack wants money for that, and it's the only feature that we really want to use that's a paid feature, but it would actually get kind of pricey uh, for all of our team members. We got eight people in there, eight or nine, and if we all paid, I think it's $7 a month, that costs more than G Suite that we're paying for. And we yeah. don't, so I don't mind paying for things, uh, but that just seems like a lot just to have the email, that's, so we're looking yeah. at other alternatives to slack 56 to, bucks a month to send memes to each other is not uh... yeah we don't need any of the archiving <laughs> features uh we never put passwords in slack or anything uh overly detailed occasionally we throw a phone number in there we're probably the most personal information like hey call so and so this is the number and extension to reach them at you know because they're having a problem with something but there's not a uh we can't really find a compelling reason to pay for slack mm. you know i don't mind yeah. So we're looking at open source alternatives and even the open source alternative, they actually have a hosted option. And I think it's like dollar fifty a month or dollar twenty five a month <laughs> per person, which is fine. I mean that's cool for hosting I and paid it more supports. for this coffee. I paid more for this coffee. <laughs> point that out. You know, if we use and Slack's an awesome product and if you use all the features, I have friends that have tons of integration level things they've done, which is great. We just don't plan on integrating all those things into Slack for us. Mm. But it's something we think about a lot is, you know, process flow, making sure customers are serviced, which leads me to one of the things I've done as a business owner is very focused on customer service because I care much more about my reputation than speed at which I expand this company. That's one begets the other though. Yeah. You have a good reputation with your with your clients, your company will expand. Your company will Why? expand. Why? Because they'll tell other people, hey, these guys are great. Right. So that is one of our brand reputation means so much to us and that's something we focus on a lot. That's why we were so slow to, and still slow to grow because I care about making sure everything is done at a perfectionist level, making sure everything inside flows really well and then we can service others. You know, it's kind of like that old joke, the mechanics car is always broke. I've seen that and a lot of the time it happens. You see IT companies that have some chaos going on inside their company and we try to be not those people. <laughs> uh, everything runs, we, we have a relaxed environment here and everything runs really smooth. It's what allows us to have some free time to think as opposed to the high stress IT where people are just hammering you know, and there's some of these guys that go as far as, you know, I know a lot of people in IT that work in this, so like, do you have a boss that just yells at you because you didn't come up with enough billable hours this month? And <laughs> why'd you tell them they could fix it over the phone? You could have drove out there and billed them for that and yeah. that kind of concept. Or other ones that go into the managed service providing that don't service your clients, even though they're getting a monthly fees to do so, which the last one we took over was such a disaster. Where you find out that they haven't done an update since 2015, was it? Oh, that was the backup company, yeah. Oh, backup, yeah, it yeah. was backups. They were paying yeah, okay. the company for backups, and the last backup was in May of 2015, so, And this was, yeah. like, a month ago? Yeah. That we, yeah, so. Oh, no, it was, like, a couple weeks ago, so. Was it? Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. so. So, bah, yeah. Two, two years and two several years. months. Um, <laughs> we also, I've been playing a lot with Zen Server. We were spinning the board around. I've done some more deep diving into it, so I'm getting ready to do a video on that. Uh, we'll probably migrate away from VirtualBox over to Zen. I just... I'm one of those people that I have to understand things perfectly because it has to integrate into our business continuity process uh, that's really important. So if anything goes down, we make sure we have an easy path by which to recover it. It's also good to know how these things work so that we know how to destroy them. Because we're, it seems like we've gotten a reputation for figuring out ways to blow things up. Not yes. like, well, well, literally blow things up, but also just like, you know, really like tax the server or whatever to, to like see how can we, you know, how can we make this thing fail? And like we're getting people sending us things now. They're like, hey, we're going to send you one of our products. Yeah. Break it. We have another company reach out to us and says, you know, you want to have some more fun with this? And I'm like, yeah. So we want to do that. And um, that's one of the things I'm going to do. So we actually built, I've got two different Zen boxes over here. We're going to migrate our system over to Zen. That way we have several servers here and we're going to play with the failover stuff. So the video will be about the resilience of it and things like that. So I want to go, if I get into a product, I want to make sure one, I understand it very well. But then if I do a video, I want to make sure I'm sharing with you a deeper understanding of the product and why we like it and pros and cons. Um, we should build one of those big sandboxes, the big Zen garden things to do oh, the yeah. sandbox things. The big I like rake that. and the stones. Get the reiki, reiki garden? Is that what it's called? That's uh, a Zen garden. Zen garden. Yeah. It's not a reiki garden. <laughs> the reiki thing. Reiki. <laughs> Your yeah. Reiki is that oh, is the is the massage thing with just Reiki's the energy. Reiki massage stuff. Just energy. You're just. Mm, yeah, I don't do that. I like don't. if I pay you for a massage and you just wave hands over me, yeah, I'm I gonna don't. get angry. Yeah, if I don't, I, <laughs> yeah, I want to. I want to actually. I want to feel worse coming out of the massage than I did going in. Yeah. Because I know the next day I'm gonna feel wonderful. 
Exactly. I want to be limping when I leave that massage. Um, I'm going to do some more videos on uh, network design, mm, I think. I think okay. people have asked me about that, and I, I, there's planning that goes into it, of course, and someone's like, how do you come up with this, or how do you do this? And now I'm gonna talk a little more about that. I'm also, uh, I've muddled around with it. So with my Sunday morning Linux review, we have a lot of fun with um, all the news sections that mm. come into it. And so I may start, because I produce a lot of show notes, and there's a lot of work that all of us put into the Sunday Morning Linux Review, and as co-hosts of putting these news items together, I'm like, you know, I don't know that all of you are listeners and, or would want to listen to the Linux podcast. So I thought about taking those same uh, show notes and then just redoing a news rip uh, of all the security topics and discussion around them. So mm -hmm. uh, that might be something I start doing. We record, the way Sunday Morning Linux Review podcast goes, we record... Every week we have a release, but we actually record every two weeks. Uh, so every two weeks is when you actually have the, our news item. So maybe I'll do it every two week uh, security news thing. Because a lot of it has to do with open source and security news, which is so idea. much going on. So many things. Mm -hmm. And I laugh because what we covered and published in the last Sunday Morning Lakes Review, um, we try to get up to the minute. Like we're doing show notes. Uh, I'm still adding to my show notes right before we go live. And... Uh, <laughs> So we covered all these news topics and published them on Sunday. And I, I laughed because so many of them were big news items by Monday and Tuesday. I'm like, hey, we talked about that first. <laughs> <laughs> you heard it here first, folks. You heard it here first, folks. So she need one of those drops. D, 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 D. You heard it here first. Yeah. So I may, I may take uh, some of that and put some more news in there because we cover a lot of topics on there. Um, and also related to the Sunday Morning Lunch Review is uh, we got it. It seems to be official now. We can sit, talk about this. We are doing a uh, trip to Florida uh, with me in there. Maybe. Maybe. If Florida's still there. Assuming Florida's still there <laughs> in, a, yeah. in a week or so. Um, Brace yeah. for impact, Floridians. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, right, because if the hurricane doesn't get you... We're coming. So is Micro Microsoft's yeah, coming yeah, too. Microsoft and Tom. And, with, and Microsoft. So Microsoft flew the Sunday morning Linux review. Me and the co-hosts, uh, we all flew out there uh, to Seattle, and that was for uh, us covering some uh, Linux news on the Azure Stack, and got to interview people like uh, Jeffrey Snover. And if you don't know who he is, amazing individual. He's the guy who actually invented PowerShell and wrote it and published all that. Uh, we are interviewing people at the top of the Azure team that are developing things. So it's been kind of fun. Uh, we actually have this Sunday, another podcast, Sunday or Monday, there's some clarification we have with Microsoft. They say, can you release it on Monday? We're like, well, we normally release things on Sunday. I got I to gotta reply to that email. Yeah. That, that came last night. For the Sunday morning Linux review. For the Sunday morning Linux review. Uh, what we, did, we did another interview with... Um, the person who actually developed the Azure apps for uh, Azure app deployments. Um, it's called Platform as a Service. It's, a, it's an available feature right now in Azure if you're into cloud hosting and things like that. And it's uh, actually a really clever system. And what we do, because we're Linux people and Microsoft, is we don't talk to, because I know I always got, we've got some emails from our fans going, uh, hey, uh, you're selling out or whatever. And I'm like, no, 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 one, we have our own strong opinions about Microsoft, but we are also covering only the aspects of Microsoft that uh, are in related to open source. And this is where a lot of confusion comes in, because they're like, oh, you didn't ask them about lawsuits they have or things <laughs> like that. I'm like, honestly, when I'm talking to the guy who's in charge of uh, developing the Azure thing, one, he's got no control over it. Off camera, oh yeah, he's got an opinion on it. He thinks he shouldn't do it, but he's like, I do I keep my giant engineering job working for a Fortune 100 company developing the next generation of software and doing everything open source, which follows a common belief that he has and the way he thinks software is structured, or does he be the guy, I refuse to work for that company mm -hmm. and I'm gonna do nothing to try to change the culture. He actively is changing the culture in a company or trying to do it. Uh, it's a big ship that has a board of directors and billions of dollars, so there's not any way you can, on a dime, say, don't do that thing. It just doesn't. It's like turning an aircraft carrier. You can't just turn an aircraft carrier. You have to right. swing out this way and come around and then back this way. And yeah, it takes like 40 miles to turn an aircraft so carrier it's, around. It's a, it's a fair assessment, and you kind of want people in there that are for that change. Uh, feel how you will about Microsoft. They've done a lot of wrong things. I don't agree with a lot of their philosophy. And Windows 10, well, well. I don't know. That's a love-hate because we make money off. If, if it just worked, 
and it didn't randomly decide to crash, what would we do? If Outlook just didn't break randomly for no reason other than it's today, um, what would we do? Yeah, really. <laughs> so thanks for that, Microsoft. Thanks, Microsoft, for creating that. <laughs> Which is leads me to why we run Linux here, because well, well yeah. I don't have time for that. Mm. We have to. We have ain't nobody got it. time for that. No, we're been. <laughs> That meme is dead. We don't even post that one no more. It's all of our Slack channel. I don't think it is. I think it, I think we can bring it back. You can bring it back. I'm bringing it back. He's bringing it back. I am bringing it back. That's it. <laughs> Every meme I post from now on is that. With that, we're going to bring it to the end. Let's do it. Let's go to work. We got work to do today. Uh, more stuff on updating Invoicing, that project apparently. sheet. Invoicing. <laughs> yeah. And uh, maybe once we are clear on it, maybe we'll share with you. Uh, we don't mind sharing it. It's just that the process is uh, not as clear as I want it to be. Um, share how we do the project management thing and the ticketing thing and how we're doing that different. Mm -hmm. At least I think different. Maybe a lot of people are doing it this way. Uh, but, yeah, we do not have a uh, assigned ticket number. Your tick number, blah, 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 blah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That doesn't, but you're, we're doing the small business support, so maybe that that works for us. And doesn't work for you because you're doing. You have a two hundred thousand users that you support, and yeah. you need something to assign them tickets and go through a call center with hundreds of people. Uh, I guess that's time you do need a ticket system. But when yeah. you're a smaller IT company, I yeah, and it's that's just a, easier. It's I don't I don't <clears> want to get a number and then have to look up who was assigned to that number or whatever. Yes. Just tell me. And I had, I had a meeting with uh, some another IT company, and it was funny because I when I said that we treat people like people and not like tickets, they, they got aggravated. He, the guy said, you know, that's a great saying because I'm dealing with our internal ticketing right now. I just want to talk to a person. Like we our own call center. I can't just call them because I want something fixed anymore because we've become <laughs> so big of a company. And he goes, it's so simple what I need done, but I need someone to do it. And they let me open a ticket, and a ticket didn't get addressed. And he mm. goes... I've typed so much. I just because only come on, just activate this feature on my. <laughs> yeah. Well, because the ticket thing too, like where I used to work, like you would, like I, I would, talk, I would talk to somebody in the tech uh, department. They would do the thing. They would fix it, and then they would be like, "Hey, can you put a ticket in for that?" So that they could get the ticket. And they'd already done the thing. Yeah. But they want to get the ticket so they can close the ticket. So that there's, I, I was like, I, but you did the thing. Yeah, I just need you to put the ticket number in. I just need yeah. to open a ticket. But you did the thing. Just open a ticket. All right. I, I think sometimes people <laughs> concentrate too hard. You're trying to quantify every statistic yeah. in the company. And if you have people actively gaming the system and actively doing that, you need to look at the system and figure out, are those people just protesting? Or is there a reason for their behavior? They're going, hey, this system is just burdensome. It After took longer for me to put in the ticket. Yeah. And for them to get it and to close it out than it did for them to just do the thing. And I've heard this before with uh, some of the different MSP platforms. Uh, the, the Some of the management sales points are it gives you amazing insight sticks to your company. And I always reach out to the technicians using it. I want to know support people. What do you think of this software? And they're like, oh, my gosh. It, you know, the, one of them told me it was 72 clicks from the time a ticket comes in to the time he can close it. And he goes, 72 clicks. He goes, and I have to rate this and rate that and do this. He goes, yeah. I, he goes, you just get to the point where you blindly click yes, yes, yes. Says, I don't even know if I'm answering them right anymore. <laughs> he goes, I just am trying to close it out. And he goes, I spend so much time doing it, I suddenly don't have as much time as I need to actually solve problems. You know, mm -hmm. and I'll, I'll use, I'll go back to one of the common problems we have. We have a client that we know the Outlook plugin. They have a the same plugin across uh, 17 different sales workstations that's part of their secure stack for uh, doing these quotes. It's a little quote plugin. All you have to do is uncheck it, recheck it. That fixes it. If we made them open a ticket each time, all they do is message, hey, my, I'm getting that error. Some of them have watched us do it remotely, and they can do it themselves now because they watch it. We send it. We met the message. We're like, okay, we're going to remote in. We remote in. We uncheck the box. You check the box. The thing goes exactly back to working. And we don't know what causes it to break because it breaks randomly on one of the 17 computers that have it maybe once a month. Mm -hmm. But if, if we understand that, and we do want to track it, we don't know the catalyst for it. We may never know because there's always updates that come through for this particular software. But if we had to do a bunch of tickets, you would suddenly have this, oh, I just want to check the box, but mm -hmm. i got to have 72 clicks to close a ticket for them. First, we got to get them to put it in the ticket system. Then I have 72 clicks to get it out of the ticket system, and it's only two clicks to actually fix the problem. <laughs> <laughs> now it's 74 clicks. Now it's 74 clicks. So... <laughs> Yeah. yeah. It's all about reducing number of clicks, but still providing good support. It's not humanly impossible to do. So uh, send me your proof. hate and feedback on yeah, this topic. Yeah, there you go. 
<laughs> we're gonna and we're gonna roll we're gonna out go. and get back to work. And, uh, yeah, we'll, and uh, if Earl watches this, he he said make sure we put the B on the yeah, outside. Yeah, yeah, I got it. Oh, Earl's our local uh, big B. He is, yeah. Yeah, there well, you is. had to be on outside. It was right here. Was it? Oh, was it? Where? Oh, okay. It's on this side. It's oh, the case it big B. Oh, there it is. Okay. Yeah, so. we both had our big B today. Mm hmm. So, it's a double B. Double B. B. Uh, <laughs> big B's. <laughs> See you next week. Happy yeah. birthday, babe. Oh, yeah, happy birthday to his wife. My wife. <laughs>